readers are already super interested in the film. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your characters? I play Ian O'Shea, uh, one of the last of the human survivors that's living in the cave out in the middle of the desert. And I eventually fall for this alien who is brought into our world that we should not like, um, who at one time... Who at one time was, was, was my love. Uh, I met her while we were out surviving, and uh, unfortunately she was lost. She was taken by the alien, so I had to give up, you know, abandon her, so to speak. Uh, and over the course of a few months, come to terms with that. But then she walks back into the caves, looking as she did the day she left me. Uh, but with but the... She, uh, but she's not herself. Her eyes are now glowing yeah, rings. She's inhabited by something else. So I've still lost her. So I, there's a big struggle there. And obviously our characters interpret this presence very differently. And, uh, yeah. Cool. Do you find yourself relating to your character in any way? Um, I don't know. It's a tough one because there's such huge kind of apocalyptic seismic shifts that take place. There's definitely parts of, parts of the characters, facets of us that were def most likely reflected in, yeah. in these characters we played. But you know, you've got to get to come to terms with the fact that everyone you've ever known and loved is dead, for instance, and that the world has been taken over. And these are big things to try and get your head around uh, and imagine how you would behave in, in those circumstances. Sure. Um, what can you tell us about the love triangle that goes on in the film? And how is it different than the one in Twilight? Well, it's not actually a triangle. Box. It's a love box. See, yeah. see, there's two of us, which would normally be the base of the triangle. Technically, there's two of her. But technically, there's two of her. Because there's Wanda in the physical form, who's the alien, but there's Melanie, who's still alive in Wanda's head. And that's where the plot thickens. There you go. Nice. Because, because he knows her as a physical form. Mm -hmm. I haven't met her a, a day before she walked into the cave. Uh, and, and he's much more sensitive. Than yes. He sees beyond the And physical. he treats her terribly. It's not true. He smacks her. First meeting, out the, out the gate. It was oh. an emotional moment. Uh, you know, you, Justified. The, the love Justified. of your life has died and gone as far as you're concerned, and then she comes back, but isn't herself. You know. Tough blow. Okay, so Stephanie Meyer wrote the book. Um, do you think it will turn into like a Twilight-esque phenomenon? And like, how do you think you'll be able to handle that? I think we could only hope that the fans like it as Yeah, it's lovely to know there's support yeah. for it. I mean, I, I, know, I know me personally, I believe you did as well. Uh, we had such a great time making this film. Um, everyone involved is so fantastic that uh, I would be more than happy to go do it again. Absolutely. Um, and what made you want to take part in the film? Like, did you read the book beforehand, or did you know about the book beforehand, or were you just handed the script and you were like, oh, this sounds pretty interesting? I was handed the script, but, uh, and then obviously mm -hmm. read the book, but I think it was Andrew Nichol and Saoirse Ronan who really got my interest. Uh, both, I mean, Andrew Nichols is the sci-fi master, really, mm -hmm. and Saoirse Ronan is one of the most talented actresses out there at the minute. So that was the hook for me. Um, what was it like working with Andrew? Easy. I mean, he's, his attention to detail is phenomenal. phenomenal. His vision is, is magnificent. Uh, yeah, it was a joy from start to finish. You feel like a kid, you know. Are you both sci-fi fans, or was this something kind of out of your element? Find, you had to find yourself um, uh, getting interested like in it. Uh, like Fifth Element mm. is a fantastic film. Gassica, um, Andrew Nichol. Gassica, yeah, so it was... Uh, and, it's like sci-fi like this was something I've done fantasy. Uh, I guess I I I'd done another sci-fi film involving aliens, but this was this was completely different because the aliens didn't have powers. So it was more of like it was more of a a drama set in this um, supernatural world, which was mm. really interesting and something I hadn't more philosophical than yeah. Than, yeah. Um, what was one of the most difficult things you dealt with when you were on set? Jake. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> The wheat that we had, like we had to thresh wheat in the field. I, I don't think you had to do this, no, I didn't. but I had to thresh wheat in the field, and there was this um, flame retardant on it. And on my first swing, it just kicked up all these sparkling particles, and I immediately choked. And like it was, it was not safe. I do not think it was safe. Yeah. I had a hard time with that because there's other people here breathing this in as well, and we're all trying not to choke during these takes. Uh, I had a day where um, I decided to learn to drive for this movie. And because uh, we don't really drive anymore, it's too small. Um, 
But there was this one particular day we were driving in the desert and we had this old clapped out truck. And uh, I had to go up over this blind hill, around some corners. And they said to me, they said, I said, how, how fast do you want me to do this? And they said, as fast as you can. Naturally. Good. So I did it my first time. Fun. You know, if I flip the car, it's just me. I'm good. Then they put Jake and Saoirse uh, and asked me to do it No seatbelts. No seatbelts. Nothing. I was, you were so kind to me because I know how terrified you were and should have been. Yeah, I was Saoirse's seatbelt. Saoirse was like this and I was holding on to the door trying to keep the most placid face I could keep. Luckily I had a hat and sunglasses on. You were crying, I think. I think, yeah. Behind I mean, the camera was far enough away, so you didn't, you know, you couldn't see it. Maybe I if you like close enough. You killed really could have. I mean, there was boulders that he had to go around, and the thing was, this car, you, you would turn the wheel. There was no assistance. And there. then it would turn. Yeah. So as he was turning this way, the wheel was already going back the other way, so he could correct it. I don't know how he did it. It was fantastic. It was terrifying and fantastic. It was worse than a roller coaster, it yet it, it had better because my life was actually on the line. And I had Saoirse's father in my vision, <laughs> and I knew if, if I killed her, he'd kill me. <laughs> it'd be a massacre. Yeah. You know. Maybe. Yeah. Um, it's a well, miracle we're here. In that. Seriously, it really is. Definitely sounds like you guys had a lot of fun be behind the scenes. Um, so as far as your fan base goes, we know that they're loyal supporters of the book, of the film. But what about someone who didn't read the book? who's not really a sci-fi person, why would they want to go see the movie? Because of, I think, Andrew's history of films mm. like Gattaca. Um, and, and he and adapted the script from Stephanie. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know, he, he wrote and produced The Truman Show, for instance, so he's obviously incredibly talented. And, it, and, and, and what a feat it was, because The Host is, is, a, is a very thick book. There's a lot going on in there, and he even, at one point, doubted his ability to be able to condense it. But, like, once again, I mean, he's, he's done it. He, he found the best... Uh, most juicy parts and really brought them together to make this this really big and interesting mm. um, And it's not a film for any particular demographic. I don't no. think you know, it'll, it'll cater to interests for, for older people people uh, I mean there's romance there's the action and there's the philosophical element to it um, My yeah. brother my, my brother who's you know 30 will go see it because there's, I mean, he has great action sequences. There's helicopters, there's gunfights, mm -hmm. um, but then my nieces and nephews can go see it because there's uh, tenderness and love. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's got it all. Cool. Um, what other uh, future movies do you see yourself doing? You see yourself doing more sci-fi films, or? I'll do whatever they give me. Yeah, right? beggars can't be choosing. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, is there anything you want to say to your fans? Come and see the host. Go see the host. March 29th. March 29th. March 29th. March 29th. It's yeah. going to be freaking awesome. Yes. Very cool. Thank you guys Thank so you much. Very much. Thank you. It's great meeting you. I'll feel you taking over me.